part one of the rope hypothesis, we compared and contrasted the quantum establishment's wave model of light and the cloud model of the atom against the respective thread versions. We saw how the scholars at universities all over the world still teach their students the Ptolemaic wave version of light. I have these oscillating electric and magnetic fields that are moving along at the speed of light. <clears throat> a mind is certainly a terrible thing to waste. Unfortunately, the tender alder boys lack the street smartness to rebel against such smothering authority and later repeat the knowledge they've acquired with stunning candor. What is it that is waving when a particle is described as a wave? The right answer is, existence is waving. The particle is jumping around, coming into and out of existence. The wave is a map of the particle's existence. But then existence itself is inexact at these tiny scales. But where quantum vibrates like a wave and mesmerizes the choir boys is when it explains the atom. Subatomic particles can disappear and reappear in another place. And they can do this without existing in the intervening space. These particles can appear out of the nothingness of space. With such breathtaking explanations at the college level, why would anyone need to go to church? As a result of these amusing proposals, the quantum mathematicians end up using three different versions of the atom to explain phenomena. The orbiting bead model, the electron cloud, and a beehive version where countless electron beads buzz around the nucleus simultaneously. Although hydrogen has a single electron, the rope hypothesis proposes instead that light consists of a rope that binds any two atoms of the universe. An atom is in fact what quantum has illustrated all of these years, a balloon. The electron is a shell that encapsulates the star-like proton. Both the electron balloon and the proton star are weaved by countless threads arriving from every atom in the universe. Let us now compare the quantum mechanical bead and cloud model against the rope hypothesis and see how they measure up when attempting to explain phenomena such as bonding, ionization, and electricity. What the mathematicians do with their electron bead to bind atoms into molecules is quite scary has to make you fear for their state of mind. The mathematicians get rid of their electron bead altogether and physically bind two hydrogen atoms with the regions where we can find the bead. The orbiting bead, or the bead that magically appears at different locations simultaneously, morphs into a shell that envelopes the nucleus. And now this volume or region where we can find an electron binds two atoms into a molecule. It is not surprising that both Bohr and Feynman stated that those who claim to understand quantum mechanics are idiots. Therefore, anyone who tries to rationalize quantum mechanics for you is no different than the born-again Christian who comes to your door to rationalize God and salvation. If the two electron clouds are negative, why don't they push each other away? Weren't negatives supposed to repel each other? Things with the same charge repel each other. If electrons get too close to each other, they'll push each other away. So let's see if the quantum mathematicians practice what they preach. In this top example here, they're overlapping in a positive way, an additive way. You can look at the overall shape that is produced like this as an oval. They can add in a negative way in which one is subtracted, so to speak, from the other.
it's like this hydrogen atom right here being um, positive and this hydrogen atom being negative, put them together, they're going to cancel each other out. And instead of producing a nice big oval like this, the electrons, though this area right here, just kind of is subtracted. Electrons will not be found here. They won't be found in the node because that's just an area that's been canceled out. They can't exist there. It is absolutely stunning that the quantum mathematicians are still unable to give you a straightforward explanation to this most fundamental of molecules when the answer has been staring at them in their faces all of these years. It is patently obvious that they are gawking at two balloons being pushed against each other. Indeed, the mathematicians simulate electron orbitals in the classroom with balloons. When two atoms are spinning in the same direction, say clockwise, the rope unwinds and the electron shells continue merging, coupling like two balls of yarn, forming the characteristic figure eight pattern, and later the oval electron shell of the hydrogen gas molecule. If one atom is spinning clockwise and the other counterclockwise, they flatten out and form the characteristic node. Clearly, the infamous orbital of mathematics is not a region where we can find an electron bead, but what the chemists have assumed it to be for decades, a balloon. The rope hypothesis suggests that this membrane is weaved by countless electromagnetic threads arriving from every atom in the universe. Both quantum mechanics and the electric universe hold that an atom is ionized if it loses an electron marble. A negative ion is an atom or molecule that has gained one or more extra negatively charged electrons. In order to sell the snake oil to the crowd, the mathematician converts the cloud back to a bead. Does the cloud or region without an electron in it now interact with other regions and form molecules? It would certainly help if the quantum scholars were able to tell you what physical entity kept the electron bead bound to the proton in the first place. How does a bowling ball physically attract a tennis ball? For instance, the mathematicians allege that sodium donates its outer electron to chlorine to physically form an ionic bond in the molecule we call salt. A sodium atom has one valence electron. A chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. If the atoms collide with sufficient energy, the chlorine atom will remove the electron from the sodium. The mathematicians state that the outer shell of sodium is no longer there. So what is it that physically keeps the two atoms together? Now sodium has neither an outer electron bead nor orbital. And why is the mysterious entity the mathematicians call energy? higher between the atoms. Under the rope model, the threads comprising the outer shells of an atom are swinging around. The entire shell is spinning. Thus, whereas a strong covalent bond occurs when the shells merge, a weaker ionic bond takes place electrostatically. The threads of the outer shell of one atom spin in one direction and those of its neighbor spin in another. The mathematicians refer to these opposite directions as positive and negative. In physics, however, there is no such thing as positive and negative. There is only rotation. The two atoms are drawn together because the threads coming downwards engage the threads swinging upwards. Think of this as two people skipping rope in the same direction. This region of high activity is what the mathematicians call higher energy. The lower energy elsewhere results because there is no interaction between threads. In the religion of mathematics, electricity consists of a flow of electron ping pong balls from one atom to another. For this, the mathematicians again morph the electron cloud back into a bead. If an outside electric pressure or voltage is applied to a conductor, the electrons will move predominantly in one direction. The effect is that electrons move from the negative to the positive terminal, 
This is the electric current. An atom has electrons orbiting the nucleus. All electricity is, is moving electrons. Electricity is the movement of charged atomic particles called electrons. Flowing electrons are called current. Electrons start to move, traveling from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal. This is electricity. An atom has a positively charged center called the nucleus, and you have negatively charged electrons orbiting around it. But since the negatively charged electrons repel each other, when you move one electron from atom to atom, you'll also move other electrons from atom to atom. An electric circuit is a closed loop where current can flow around. Electrons can flow from the battery through the copper wire to the other side of the battery. All the electrons are moving at the same time. Over here, the negative terminal of the battery is pushing the negative electrons away, and those electrons are pushing other electrons away. The actual flow of electrons goes from negative to positive. Quantum mechanics and the electric universe invoke the amusing planetary model of the atom to theorize about ionization and electricity. However, the electron bead model proposes that you can receive a shock even if you're not in contact with a live wire. An electron bead may jump to an atom in your hand. Quantum electricity makes no provision for contact between atoms. There is no physical explanation for how or why an electron jumps the divide. And still you wonder why the electron beads float into your body. What desperate demand does your body have for electron beads? Under the rope model of the atom, electron shells merge to form a row of aligned atoms. This serpentine spins, swinging threads around itself. Faraday referred to this invisible mechanism as a magnetic field. With the electron serpentine model of electricity, we can readily see why there must be physical contact between your skin and a wire. Your entire body is now physically connected to the grid. The zap that you receive is a torsion of countless interconnected electron shells that now extend into your body. In the next video, we will look at Thread Theory's version of the neutron and explore how it fits into the puzzle. Thank mm -hmm. you.